Hello, uh, Matthew here. <laughs> Hello, Zuko here. Hi, I am Matthew, and I put up a poll a couple days ago asking if anybody would want to see a tutorial on how I'd take the Ebsynth animation, uh, run it through After Effects, uh, comping and all that, and uh, I decided I would go ahead and do it. I don't want this tutorial to be too long, so instead of showing you how I do things in After Effects, I'm more so showing you what I do in After Effects. There's plenty of After Effects tutorials out there, so if you don't know how to do something, uh, there's going to be a ton of videos out there that will be able to help you out with that. By the way, I'm not going to be going through how to do the Ebsynth animation itself. You can refer to Joel's video on how to do all of that. Um, my tutorial is going to start off after you have everything drawn and rendered out into PNG sequences. So in Joel's tutorial, he had all of his layers set up on green screens when he did his drawings in Photoshop to run through Ebsynth. Somebody actually reached out to me on Twitter. His name is Dr. LMAO, and he let me know that you don't have to do green screen. Ebsynth can handle transparency perfectly fine. If you come in here to my outputs, uh, it's all transparent and it ran perfectly fine. Um, on Apocalypse, I was exporting everything with like a, you know, a blue screen or green screen. Uh, but if you just leave transparency on and export as a PNG, uh, then you can add green and blue back into your project. So first I figured I would go ahead and open up some previous project files and walk you through how some of those shots were put together. The first one I have here is from the Apocalypse short. Uh, so you can see right here that I have this clip that was animated through Ebsynth. Uh, this is just the raw output of what you would get from Ebsynth. I like to set up my scenes in 3D space in After Effects, um, which does a couple of things. It lets you get parallax when you add some camera shake to the actual camera in After Effects, and it allows you to use lights to also affect all of the layers. Um, so let me show you how some of that looks. As you can see right here, I have the background, and I can show you how I make those. It's a very simple process of taking stock images and just running them through Adobe Illustrator using the image trace function and turning them into vectors. So that way uh, they look a little more stylized and cartoony, but you can also scale them to as large as you need and you won't lose any quality, which is super helpful. Well, I have those set to 3D, as you can see right here with the little 3D cube checked. Um, so, so this is the view, if it weren't 3D, um, so let me go ahead and turn on the camera here, and now we're, the viewport is showing what you would see from the like virtual camera. And I did add some camera shake to it, and I'll go ahead and show you that later on. I set up an ambient light just to give it an overall gloomy, kind of orange, fiery feel since this is the apocalypse and everything is presumably on fire. And then I added another light, which kind of gives a shadow on both the characters and the background. Um, Kind of emulate the sun and then uh, they're outside everything's on fire so i went ahead and added a fire asset that i added a blur to as well as uh, dropping the opacity just so it kind of looks like the the glow of the fire rather than fire being right in front of them and then i added a layer of just embers and then on top of all that i have the adjustment layer with the red giant vhs effect um, and you don't have to use that. You can just um, add a color correction to the whole thing. Any effect that you can lay on top of everything will do a really good job of kind of bringing all the pieces into a more cohesive whole. Now we're going to take a look at the Wolf of Wall Street bets. I'm just going to show you a little bit more how lights can work in your scene as well as um, some camera movement. So for this short, I had some stock footage of monkeys using office equipment that I absinthed. And as you can see, this one had a little bit of camera movement. So despite the background being entirely red in the base footage, I was able to pull a 3D camera track from at least this shot just because the monkey itself doesn't move a whole lot. In order to do a 3D camera track, you're going to have to bring in the original base footage. And then you just come over here to Tracker and you'll click on uh, Track Camera. And then once that's done analyzing, you just click Create Camera right here. And then any layer you set to 3D, you'll have to position it correctly in, uh, 
in Z space. But if it's positioned correctly, it'll move um, just like the background would. So we have the camera movement. Now what I wanna show you is this light here for the alarm. As, as you can see, I have a spotlight set up right here, um, which you can just do by going to layer, new light, and then spot. So I set that to kind of a, a light red. I didn't want it to be too intense. I have an intensity of 149. Uh, the cone angle is 63, but again, you can change all these settings based on what you want it to look like. And then I have the point of interest animated to just spin. So then, as you can see, uh, since the background and the monkey are in different layers and they're separated from each other in Z space, as the light spins, it affects the background first and then comes around and affects just the monkey and then back again to the background, which just gives it a little more depth, which is really cool. Okay, this is from the low five beats animation. So this one's pretty straightforward. There's not really a lot of camera movement, but I did do a couple of things to add depth. Um, number one, I masked out this layer up here with the you know scissors and paintbrushes, and then I added a blur to it, which just kind of gives it uh, the effect that's closer to the camera and out of focus. And then I added a couple of lights here uh, coming off of the light bulb from the lamp. Let's let me turn off the lights just so we can see what it looks like without. Um, so as you can see, it looks fine. It doesn't look bad at all. Um, adding lights just adds depth and a little bit more finesse to the project. Um, so as you can see, I have this light here that's affecting uh, the girl. It is closer to the lamp. As you can see, it's brighter. And as we move back, uh, it gets a little bit darker, which is how it would look if you were to film it for real. But then I found a problem that the cat in the background has a really, really dark shadow. And uh, that's not how that would look. So I just added uh, another light just to aim kind of back a little bit towards the cat. And as you can see, the part of the cat that would be closest to the lamp is a bit brighter than the rest of him, which is how that would really look. Okay, so I have the dual at high noon open up here in After Effects. And I just wanted to show you the camera shake, which I think turned out uh, really good in this short. So uh, same thing, let me turn off the camera here. So this is the view without the camera. As you can see, it's locked off, um, which again, is fine but the camera shake adds a little bit more realism to it. Um, so you just set the layers to 3D and then set up a camera. Now, another thing that I did before adding the camera shake is uh, in the camera settings, I went ahead and checked enable depth of field and you can change the focus distance, which will then uh, allow you to add a little bit of uh, depth of field. So you can make a background out of focus and to get even more creative if you had say, two layers of people absinthe, uh, maybe you did uh, an over the shoulder shot because you're getting fancy. Uh, you could, you know, rack the focus back and forth between the two characters, whatever. You're creative, you'll figure it out. So I have the street layer. I have the layer of the cowboy himself and then uh, the adjustment layer. So now that that's all in 3D space, you just come down here to the camera and you will alt click on the position I'm just gonna bring up a box for you to write in your expression. Um, so you just type in wiggle, then you'll put in the parenthesis, and then always do one comma, um, I think 25 is what I initially started with, which I thought was a little bit uh, too intense. The motions were a little too wide. Uh, so I just started toying with it and bringing it down. I think I eventually got down to 10. And uh, as you can see, the camera moves just a little bit. and uh, But as it does, uh, you can see that there's parallax, which is just, uh, you know, two things passing over each other as the camera moves. If you were to just put the cowboy layer and the background layer, not in 3D, and the camera would move, they would move together. But since it's in 3D, they kind of move separate of each other, which just makes it look a little more real. Another thing that you might have to do sometimes is some cleanup of the absinthe animation itself. Um, sometimes when like the, the character's head touches the top of the frame, uh, it can kind of smear a bit. And it looks really weird. It looks like uh, the old Tom and Jerry cartoons when they get hit on the head and they grow a large bump. Yeah, that, that's what that looks like. It's really easy to fix. Um, you just throw a mask on it. And as you can see, it, this, this only showed up in a, a little part. Yeah, just a little bit of a, a fleshy blob floating in the air. Uh, so just throw on the mask, set it to subtract, 
and uh, it is gone. So that's about all I have for you today. This is a learning process. This is fairly new, obviously. So as time goes on, uh, we'll figure out more and maybe I'll make another one of these down the line as I learn more myself. Uh, if you liked this tutorial, drop a like. If you want to take a look at any of these animations you haven't seen them yet, uh, go take a look, please. 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 And subscribe. I'm making these animations every Sunday. I have a long list of ideas that's growing much faster than I can make them. So I'm going to be going for a very long time. Hit subscribe. Ring the bell. Click like. Uh, uh, share it. Is that all the YouTube things that they say?